so, uh, I took yesterday off. I was taking care of some stuff. Um, but they will actually be daily vlogs uh, on a normal basis. Um, but I needed a subject for today, and one sort of fell in my lap. Um, somebody new to my content uh, asked me my opinion on various libertarian slash anarchist sort of wheelhouse issues. And uh, the, the subject of the Free State Project came up. And uh, I have strong issues with them. So let's get started with some of it. Um, we'll start with the basics. And this isn't scripted. I don't script my vlogs. The whole point of it is that like I'm just sort of doing it. And it basically like unfiltered bullshit coming from my from my brain uh so if i miss something feel free to post that in the comments you know if i miss some key detail that's actually really uh good maybe i'll do um <laughs> maybe i'll do a uh uh follow-up video but the general idea of the free state project is what if we got 20,000 libertarians to move to New Hampshire? We could start swinging elections there and putting our votes where etc cetera, etc. Cetera. I used to be one of those people. And uh, you know, one of those idealistic sort of party archist libertarian sorts um like a decade ago. Um, and I thought the Free State Project was reasonable. Um, and then I sort of started to trend toward the Ron Paul libertarian camp. Um, and, and around then is when um, I, I got my fucking Young Americans for Liberty t shirt and, and did my fucking my tour of duty with them. Uh, to pretty much abysmal failure. And one of the reasons, of course, is because the institution is overwhelmingly right-wing, which I'll include in this um, thing very specifically to say that most of these libertarians are right-wingers and they don't like outsiders to that. They're, they're not a fan of left libertarian ideology. They're NAP like adherence and that's basically it so if they don't deem what you're doing to be aggression then it's totally fine and 100 percent libertarian regardless of its effects regardless of its effectiveness they'll say it's fine um it's fucking not <laughs> and like i have strong issues with not only their their philosophies but also their praxis so i figure that like this would be a good opportunity to like get some of this on the table uh so let's start with foundational issues fuck voting fuck voting and, and fuck party arcs um the whole idea that we have to ask permission from the state to be libertarians or anarchists is fucking weird and very stupid. And when you get to, like, I, I, I kind of needed it. You know, I'm not saying it doesn't help in any scenario. I kind of needed that transition period between supporting the state and not supporting the state. And I kind of needed the first part of it to be, like, the let's vote for a better state kind of mentality because I was basically a fascist in high school and uh, it's not good right uh, but ultimately uh, uh, I, I, I broke out of that mentality because I started to realize that all these campaign materials that were being printed for me at Yale, all these uh, political bullshit things they weren't going to change shit Voting doesn't change shit. 
Um, you might think that your little corner of the world is freer. But for everything the state gives you back, they take, like, ten more things from you, at the least. And so the idea that you're just gonna fucking write hard enough on that piece of paper and the state's gonna... <gasps> I'm so sorry! I had no idea! I'm just gonna collapse my brutal bloody empire that's been lasting for millennia. No. It's not gonna happen. You can't vote your pl your way to freedom. Um... So, the voting aspect of it is problematic at, at, the, at the best. And, like, the whole notion uh, of, of voting for freedom, while the state is ever increasing the debt, while they're killing people overseas, while they're manufacturing crises here at home for the prison industrial complex let's not you know why am I giving my money to a politician when I could be giving that money to a homeless person when I could be giving that money to a food bank when I could be giving that money to somebody who will run around with a bag of quick crete and fill the potholes the government wouldn't when I could be giving it to somebody who will actually put it to fucking use bettering my community. When I could use that money myself to better my own personal standing. When I could do it where I am right now. Why would I do that? I support direct action approaches. That's what I support. I support the idea that if you don't like something you should change it. That doesn't set so well with the Free State Project people. Uh, they have the notion that voting works and that all we need is a strong enough concentration of libertarians in one state to make that state free. Bullshit. So, the first thing you should know is that um, they've had some things that they claim are moderate success in the region. But you know what else they've had? A huge amount of arrests on their records. Uh, inability to legally own certain things or legally do certain things. They have effectively made the libertarian position to reduce your own liberty on purpose. It's funny to me. I, I fucking laughed so many times at it. I, I used to share around this video, Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree, I think it was called, because I thought that that was the model for civil disobedience, and it really bothered me the way they treated him. It still fucking does, just to be absolutely clear, but not for the same reasons. It used to bother me because I thought, well, well, shucks, we should do something about this. We should get over there and sort this out. We should pull him out of jail. We should, we should fill out all the right paperwork. We should pay his bail whenever he needs it. Because gosh darn it, this ain't right. Uh naive because the truth is that these people should be doing everything they can to cover their tracks and I recognize the point of his victimless crime spree by the way it was designed to demonstrate that doing completely benign things can get you jailed for a long time I 100% understand, and I even respect him for putting his money and his life where his mouth was. But, the point has been made, right? We all now know that there are a bunch of reasons that men with guns will come to harm you if you do things that they say not to do 
or do th or don't do things that they tell you to do. But we've known that for a long time because that's what government is. Uh, the Jim Crow laws, for instance, designed to target black people so that they could still put them in prison where they could still be forced onto, like, chain gangs and shit for prison labor. And now, like, less chainy chain gangs where it's totally not slavery. We're paying them, like, a few cents that they can spend on ramen at the commissary. Ha <laughs> Um, those were victimless crime laws for the most part. These things aren't new. Uh, they've existed in feudal countries. They, they existed in the fucking uh, um, Queen's England. Uh, the, the Britain that, that fucking people left, right? They, they, uh, the, the U.S. Le leaves Britain and, and, and fu fucking suddenly we forget that the reason the U.S. left Britain was allegedly because of victimless crime laws. These things have always existed, and they always will, as long as there's a state. Because let me tell you, there's no victim in tax dodging. There's no victim in having a self-defense tool that falls outside the ATF's arbitrary guidelines. I could go on, you know? And, and, and what's really funny is that the, the Constitution... Um, that, that has this Bill of Rights, uh, inalienable declaration words. Uh, no, they're, they're not considered rights in these people's minds and they're not inalienable. So th they'll, they'll continue to prosecute victimless crime laws as long as they stand because that's the nature of the state. Really, firmly, 100%. So you, you've been there, right? You've, you've seen it. You've, before we were even born, there was already enough case on the books for anarchy to become a well-established philosophical school. Hundreds of years ago, we had people talking in terms of abolishing the state, of liberating the people, of forming a better world on the, the, the ashes of the old. We had based people before based was a word. And they, they all found victimless crime laws. Like Lysander Spooner. I, wrote, I, I did an entire video on his mail service. You can go check that out. Abolish the USPS. Um, he knew about this. Because his victimless crime was helping people get their mail cheaper. Faster, more efficiently. Woo! Criminal. So, you know, um, this is not news. And Derek J. never needed to do it. Also, the book, You Can Get Arrested for That. Uh, is actually much funnier if you want these particular things. Um, but the general vibe, the general gist you should get, is that these acts of civil disobedience don't really help much, um, if at all. And they certainly don't help the person. At all. Like, Derek J. got thrown in jail. How did that improve his situation? Or is he just okay with being a martyr for an obvious thing? Because le let me remind you, we all already knew that the government was like this. So what's the point? Um, and then you get to the actual practical aspects of what it is. Because... <laughs> Let's move what's already a minority of people to a very concentrated area. Good. That always ends well. Waco. Ruby Ridge. The Bureau of Land Man Management situation. 
which eventually ended up with the death of Lavoie Finicum, I think his name was. You know, if I didn't already say it, I'll say it again. Waco. We're just going to put all our people in this one area. That's good. That's not going to result in fish in a barrel. No, nah. -uh. Um, the Philadelphia move bombing, where they literally fucking piled a fucking bag of C4 onto the roof next to a fuel oil tank. Fuck your women and children, we're going in. <laughs> Massacres throughout history have taken place because people have isolated their power to a small region. And then they were immediately able to be taken out. All their progress, everything they built up. Just up in a puff of smoke, sometimes literally. Black Wall Street. The marches at Kent State. Four dead in Ohio. Did you forget? Because I didn't. And it's weird so many people did. It's weird. How many people can recognize the naivete in hindsight of concentrating anti-establishment activity in an area? but can't recognize it in the moment or in the planning phase. No, you shouldn't move to a single state that the government can martial law, seal off, and keep you in, and controlled, and knuckled under, and raided, and fucked with, and damned to the hell of statism. You shouldn't stay there so that this can happen so that the libertarian presence that would have been spread out and able to talk with people, network, get shit done, is only in New fucking Hampshire. What? Or whatever state you want to do. And by the way, this basically goes for the seasteading movement too. Anything similar. Don't. 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 You know, the seasteading thing? They fucking got uh, their their shit fucked by the Thai government. And then they tried to get a boat to do it, and they were fucked by the government of, I think, Panama? Right? Don't! Just stop. And then the thing you're doing that you were going to do, don't do that anymore. Um, do something else. Something more effective. Uh, stop isolating yourself in one area... And telling everybody to move there so that they can be a high-density zone for feds, for fucking Karens, for cops, for anything they want to put in there. The Chaz is also a good example. Any of these protests that try to occupy an area, man. The one good thing Occupy Wall Street had in mind was the debt forgiveness thing because you can buy debt um, in clusters uh, from agencies and then just forgive it uh, and you buy it for very cheap because you're buying the asset so you can decide what to do with that asset and they had the idea that maybe we should just like zero it out that's smart but you didn't have to be in a park to do it What did OWS get? It got a bad reputation. It got liberals called all sorts of foul names. It got you nowhere and nothing. And things got worse. And then you got Trump. And then you'll get another Trump because nobody cares that Biden is basically the same. All these fucking movements that want you to cluster in a place are going to be a clusterfuck. Can we can we can we agree on that? No. Okay. So then, when we get to that practical application thing, well, man, you're just being a buzzkill and not really giving us any solutions. You're just complaining. You just complain. All you do is complain, complain, complain. 
Um, here's the solution that is the opposite of the Free State Project that might actually get some freedom up in this bitch. Um, don't do a Free State Project. Be where you are. Uh, don't coalesce in a given area and try to convert as many people in that area you are in to libertarianism. Try to bring them the truth. Try to bring them anarchy. Try to be reasonable with them. Try to get on people who you would normally insult and just pass off as normies. Try to get them too. Try to get as many people in as many places as possible so that there is no free state project. It's free everywhere, bitch. We will be free because there are too fucking many of us. That's what you should do. But when I say this to people, when I say that things like the Free State Project are bollocks, when I say that, you know, maybe you should be less public about what your militia does, a variety of other things that are maybe also true, I get shit on. Right? Um, but here's the real shit. Um, these people are ignoring a long tradition of libertarians doing what they want anyway, regardless of what the state says, in whatever area they're in. They didn't need to go to a super free place. Um, Konkin's, like, uh, what was it, An Anarcho Village? That was in California. And it worked because he just didn't fucking do what he was told. Because he made it work there. And it can work anywhere if it can work in California. Because California has always been a hub for statism. All these major population density areas will be because the state creates those to make people stacked on top of and next to each other. Because it's more like a prison and easier to monitor and warden. So they'll raise people in those environments with, like, um massive amounts of control enabling propaganda so that they're okay with the structure and they don't rebel. Maybe. But it worked there. It worked in California. If it can work in California, you can build an anarcho village in Tennessee. You can build an anarcho village in Alaska. You can build an anarcho village in Illinois. You can build an anarcho village in Texas, in Florida, in Georgia. You can build it wherever you fucking want. As long as you're willing to put your money where your mouth is. And boy, I tell you, if you try to do this the statist way, that boy ain't living right. And a lot of people will hate you when you move to the area. Because suddenly their program they were running is now overrun with newcomers. You think it's bad when uh, Americans try to say that foreigners are bad, that we shouldn't accept Afghani refugees or Mexican immigrants or people from Cuba or anywhere, 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 right? You think that's bad? Just wait until you come and Karen doesn't like what you're doing with your lawn. Just wait until you're the one being micromanaged. Because it'll fucking happen. Just wait until the state comes in and clears your shit out. Because people didn't like you who were already on the side of the state. And you didn't make them like you anymore by bringing a bunch of drugs and other shit into their area. By being hubs of, like boisterous activity by being a Karen's worst enemy or by legitimate gripes like the Free State Projects Association with 
Free Talk Live. And the fact that they had to write a whole ass statement on fucking the child can't consent. The Free State Project is a movement to get 20,000 pro-liberty active, well, and, and like among other things, right? Pro-liberty activists to migrate to New Hampshire and to work to limit the government's role in society to, prote to the protection of individuals' right to life, liberty, and property. 2,000 participants have already moved and 18,000 more have pledged to move within five years. This is by Matt Phillips. For over a decade, the radio blah blah blah, Free Talk Live, Ian has convinced many people over the years of the value of libertarian ideals and the potential for the Free State Project to achieve its mission of liberty in our lifetime. He's likely brought more movers to New Hampshire than any, any single individual. Uh, however, neither Ian Freeman nor FTL's other hosts have been official spokespeople for the FSP. In recognition of this value, uh, to provide FTL with tickets uh, F for FTL hosts, sponsorship, blah, blah. As one might expect of any group of 20,000 plus people from time to time, participants have engaged in controversial behavior or espoused controversial opinions. When a media personality does, does this, they risk associating their sponsors and business partners with that behavior and opinion. Ian Freeman has recently done so with his statements regarding the age of consent. The Free State Project is building a community of pro-liberty activists in New Hampshire. The FSP's board of directors has a responsibility to this community to protect and grow the FSP's ability to achieve this goal. Politician Gish Gallup. Therefore, effective immediately, the FSP will no longer provide FTL with promotional consideration and has ended the mutual sponsorship agreement. Furthermore, Ian Freeman is lo no longer invited to attend FSP-hosted events, including Porkfest and Liberty Forum. <laughs> Dissolving this relationship reinforces the existing reality that the FSP and FTL and Ian's other organizations such as Free Keen and Liberty Radio Network are different organizations with different missions and standards that should not be conflated with each other. Participants in the FSP also participate in numerous other organizations, none of which are endorsed by or speak for the FSP. And then uh, their house was raided because this is on uh, sentinelsource.com by Steve Gilbert at Sentinel Staff. More details emerge surrounding search of Free Keen House. The warrant for Sunday's search and seizure of electronic equipment by federal authorities in a Keen House specifically names Ian Bernard and contains no other names. The seizure at 73 Leverett Street is part of an ongoing FBI investigation into what the search warrant states is the possession or distribution of child pornography. It was apparently triggered by a month-long child pornography sting operation set up by federal authorities in Virginia. Bernard is the only name listed on the sealed warrant issued by the U.S. District Court of New Hampshire, which was carried out by the FBI, NH State Police, and Keene Police Department. A list of items compiled by authorities indicates 46 electronic devices were taken in the search. It shows computers were confiscated along with cameras, flash drives, and cell phones. No arrests were made. The house is owned by Shire Free Church Monadnock, according to city property records, although the warrant makes no mention of that name. It's home to some individuals associated with a libertarian-leaning activist group, often referred to locally as Free Keen because of a website run by that group. So... Um, it goes on uh, to say Freeman told the Monitor Monday that the FBI broke into a large pornography website to install visitors a hack that would identify computers accessing the site even if they were disguised beyond, behind encryption he said the FBI claims someone using a computer there went to his website and that the FBI will attempt to identify the user through digital fingerprints of the confiscated devices Freeman says he and his two roommates are innocent, though. Today, in a post on the website, freekeen.com, Freeman wrote, While I don't believe that anyone in my home did what they're saying was done, I would not put it past the FBI to manufacture the evidence that they or I did. 
Last week, Freeman was expelled from the FSP for comments he has made about Age of Consent regarding sex with minors. Freeman has talked about the issue on his syndicated radio show, Free Talk Live, that is broadcast around the nation, and has blogged about it. Freeman has said that some people under the legal age of consent are capable of making mature decisions regarding sexual relations. So that's the that's the next problem. You have image problems and you can't do shit about them. Hella, it's bad. It's very not good. Watch, there'll be somebody claiming I'm bullshit in the comments or in somebody's comments because I'm bringing this up. But you know what? I don't care. Because I go against these people anyway. Um, the Thaddeus Russell situation where he's like... <laughs> saying that it might be okay for a 13-year-old girl to fuck her teacher for better grades. The fact that I had to go after a fucking pro-contact pedophile, uh, Riley, for, for a long time. Because that one was trying to promote... Uh, sex with children as a children's autonomy issue uh, and trying to make libertarians more accepting of it. Um, those things are fucking problems. The fact that he was also connected to Giovanni Leiftis Morgan who like wants to masturbate babies for their own pleasure. The fact that the fact that there's so many problems like this. Don't move all your eggs to one basket because then all you'll do is get them associated with it like that. The FSP had to bar him for a reason, right? It's a fucking problem. Um, and that's not the only problem either. There's also like <laughs> statism and racism <laughs> coming out of it. Like the Free State Project used to house Christopher Cantwell. Um, I believe he was one of the people specifically interviewed by uh, the Colbert Report. Uh, and then he turned into the crying Nazi. Now y'all have that on your record. When you group up like that, you make yourself a target. I could mention so many other problems with that particular group, but it's not just that group. It's all groups like it. It's all of them. You can't do it this way and win. It doesn't work. What works is trying to free your own area by helping them remove the barriers in their own minds that are keeping them away from liberty. That's what works. You need to get them to be mentally freer, not move to a somewhat freer area, and then be the reason people cry out for statism. Because if we're not everywhere, if we're not in all places, if libertarians... And, and especially the anarchist variety aren't in all places we already lost because they can do whatever they want to that postage stamp on your fucking map and you can't do shit about it there's a reason they tell you not to put all your eggs in one basket there's a reason they tell you to be more strategically sound because it's fucking stupid not to be you know and the primary thrust is voting? <laughs> That's been a problem since the 70s. Libertarians and their fucking voting. Konkin pointed it out accurately when he said that it was an attack. An attack on libertarians. Especially since the first thing that the party did was sold out to the coctopus. Fucking. And this is just like scratching the surface because to be completely honest, um, the fact that they're so right-leaning, the fact that it's all capitalists, 
means that you're going to push away the hippie sorts that have been forming communes forever. Those people are going to be less likely to talk to you because of the Free State Project and because of its direct affiliation with Koch-linked organizations, with conservative-linked organizations, with conservatives. You're going to lose people who have more experience than you. Don't do that. Maybe be unity forward and just say we should work together no matter where we are. We'll deal with the state thing and then we'll sort it out. No, you want a free state, which is a contradiction in fucking terms. You see why I might be a little irritated by it, especially since a lot of these people will tell you that you're not doing anything or that you haven't done anything for libertarianism if you don't do exactly what they're doing. Yet yeah, you didn't vote for the people I wanted you to vote for. You weren't at the meetings. So you're not doing anything for libertarianism. You didn't drive party members. You didn't help us get more n more numbers on our magic charts that we have affiliate links for and get financially compensated for. You didn't do any of that. So you're not a real libertarian and you have no business speaking. Unless you're going to get involved in the process, get it out of the way so that we can keep being statist in the same area and acting like we're doing something for the country. No. No, that's not how this works. How this works is we push for a freer everywhere. Whether you're an agorist and you want uh, that sort of market anarchist approach to let's see how many illegal but totally ethical things we can do under the table that can get us the money necessary to still participate and grow in this state-run economy, this state capitalist economy, a lot of the people at uh, Free Keen and etc. would be upset about hearing that phrase, but it's state capitalism. Um, you get as free as you can with the agorist strategy by doing basically things that are totally ethical but not necessarily legal. Uh, or, or whether you're a mutualist and you just want to form a commune essentially where you're living on multiple properties, like where property use is dictated by a more commons-based approach, rather than just, I found this and I'm going to, you know, have it forever. Whether you want the syndicalist approach of, we're going to unionize and try to take down the state capitalist machine from the inside, you know, there are more direct action-y approaches whether you're one of the left libertarian organizations running a food bank, right? Communist and socialist alike, left communist, or sorry, libertarian communist and uh, anarcho communist, like anarcho socialist, anarcho libertarian. Like, there's a ton of approaches that work. And not all of them are this end cap, weird ass, like, haven that a lot of these people. Uh, tacitly claim is the only way um, but their direct action there I'm going to free myself I'm going to make my situation freer and I'm going to encourage you to do the same and I'm going to put my money where my mouth is those are what'll work not a free state there is no free state. There will never be a free state. States are inherently unfree. Stop trying to make free state happen. It's never going to happen. So this is my disjointed bullshit fucking rant on the free state project. If you like this for any reason, feel free to uh, hit that, that like button, hit that share button, hit that subscribe button. Uh, hit any of the donation links you want. I don't fucking... I'm very grateful for any support you want to give me because I know YouTube's algorithm ain't going to help. 
Find me on library, by the way, but whatever you do, smash the fucking state.